Hey, what's going on? My name's Chris West. This is my second video in a new series I'm working on where I ask other musicians to join me in a virtual masterclass roundtable. For this video, I asked five other saxophonists to all improvise over a set of chord changes that I sent them, and then talk a little bit about the gear that they used, and maybe some musical techniques and approaches they may have used. So first, here are the chord changes without anybody playing over them. Now this is all programmed, so it's going to lack a human feel to it, but it'll serve our purposes for this video. First up, we have Mickey Gutierrez. Mickey is an excellent saxophonist based out of Nashville, Tennessee, originally from Washington, D.C. Mickey is a very unique, progressive player that often can be seen using effects and pedals and electronics. He has a band called the 3AM, which is a trio. Mickey can also be seen playing around the Nashville area, as well as doing clinics and master classes and session work. He also does live streams from his home studio. So let's see what Mickey Gutierrez does on these changes. Hi, how you doing? Thank you so much, Chris, for having us on here. We're really excited. I am super pumped to talk about nothing but sax right now. First, we're gonna talk about my horn setup. What's going on? The horn itself is an H Kuf made of Kyleworth. Uh, it's 1971 um, and uh, it's a Superba one, very large bell, German horn, great horn. My mouthpiece is a, a custom made um, Saxscape mouthpiece that I was using today from a great guy named Ken Barry in Arizona. Um, look him up. He's on Facebook, Instagram, Sax, Scape. The ligature I have is custom made from a good friend of, of mine, a mentor and uh, amazing colleague by the name of Doug Moffat. And he and I, he kind of used uh, several of us in here in the saxophone Nashville community as guinea pigs for his um, passion about creating mouthpieces with reed plates and really, really, really cool stuff. Also, it's a, there's a whole holistic vibrational frequency thing going on that Doug and I had a lot of conversations going on back and forth. So yeah, we miss him a lot. And then my read is a Daddario Woodwinds Select Jazz Too Hard Unfiled. Yeah. And my mic is the same one I'm actually using right now. Trusty SM7B from Shure, right? They're great. They're fantastic. And uh, Mike Pre, I'm actually using a Scarlet um, uh, Focusrite Scarlet 18i20. The mic pre's in there are solid. I've got no complaints. And then the doll I'm using is uh, Ableton Live 10 Suite. Oh, shout out Boston Neck Straps, Boston Sax Shop Neck Strap, Newberry um, Neck Strap. Jack, you rock, dude. The track, how did I approach it? What I approach it as is an improvisational conversation. I'm listening for the chords, I'm listening for the movement, the rhythm, the harmony, melody, where I can fit in, what I can take from a pre-existing melody or harmony and um, alter it just a little bit, depending on the length of it, depending on the style, depending on what I have to say, depending on my mood, <laughs> you know what I mean? Depending on the time of day. Getting out of that, I want I want a clear tone, number one, right? And I also tend to enjoy staying away from the one. I love augmented runs. Um, dominant. I like the sharp five. I like the flat seven, flat nines occasionally when you know when it works. Um, augmented coming off of the root and the seventh, diminished also coming off the seventh. Um, so and then pentatonics off the one, three, and five. You can really you can really do a lot of damage with those sorts of things. Those are my licks. That's what I was doing, and that's kind of what was going through my head. And then I try to kind of let all that okay go away, you know? I try to let it come in and out as fast as possible. I treat it like high school math class, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't pay attention, there it is. So hopefully you can't relate to that one.
Next up, we have Max Abrams. Max is a great saxophonist based out of Nashville, Tennessee. He currently plays with the Mavericks, but has a ton of credits to his name, including Chris Stapleton, Greg Allman, Taj Mahal, Little Big Town, Frankie Valley, Widespread Panic, huge list of people he's played with. Max is a Yamaha performing artist and also has several albums out under his own name. So let's hear what Max has to say. All right, man, gear. I love gear. I love anything that makes my life easier. So I'm always looking for better stuff. I'm a Yamaha performing artist, so I play their 82Z unlacquered alto and tenor with no F sharp. I love these high mass neck screws. I think they work. I blind tested all the guys in my band and we could all tell which one was the high mass screw and which one wasn't. It just makes the horn easier to play. I love Ishimori ligatures. I also love the Boston Sack Shop ligature. I play Boston Sack Shop reeds. I think they're the best reeds in the world right now. They last forever. They're super consistent um, and they're very versatile. My main mouthpiece on tenor right now is probably Theo Wani Slant Sig just because it's versatile. Um, for recording, Logic. It's just easier. I've never been a Pro Tools guy, but Logic just, it's easy. For uh, microphones, uh, there's a guy here in Nashville named Nathan McLeod. Makes an incredible ribbon microphone. Chris, I know you're playing one too, so maybe we can show a little link uh, to Nathan's thing, but a good microphone makes a huge difference. I use that uh, with my Apogee Duet, and um, man, I've cut tracks for big records just sitting right here in my living room in my pajamas. So yeah, gear. It's always changing, but man, you know, just keep looking and looking and looking and looking and looking and uh, see what works for you. Next up, we have Jeff Coffin. Now, Jeff really needs no introduction. However, he is currently the saxophonist for the Dave Matthews Band. Uh, he used to play with Bela Fleck and the Flecktones. Uh, he plays out under his own name, tours the world, doing clinics and concerts and master classes. Jeff is one of a kind, and we're very lucky to have him in Nashville. So let's hear what Jeff has to say. Okay, so as far as mouthpieces, um, uh, I'm back on my Freddie Gregory. Uh, it's a hard rubber. Uh, mouthpiece got a slight baffle in there. Uh, I'm not sure what model it is. I found it many years ago when I was touring with Bela Fleck and the Flecktones. We were in London, and I went into a shop, found this mouth, just randomly tried some mouthpieces. Um, thought it was great. I think I did the conversion differently. I think I, I, I thought I was getting a really great deal on it. The chances are pretty good that I wasn't. I've got uh, soprano, alto, tenor, and baritone uh, saxophones. All Yamahas. I've got a multitude of mics. Um, right now, I've been using the Shure 44, which is a large diaphragm uh, microphone. And I've been loving it, actually. It's really fantastic. I've also got a Lawson 47, uh, which is a clone of the Neumann 47. That's really great. I've got a stereo um, TL22, a Townsend Lab 22, which is a mic emulator, which is fantastic. Um, I've got a couple of AEA mics, ribbon mics. I've got their 44. I've also got their Stereo 88, which is amazing. Both of those are incredible, incredible mics. Uh, as far as preamps, um, I've got a, a Universal Audio 2610. Um, my DAW system, I use Pro Tools. Um, I've got two Apollo uh, preamps, uh, eight-channel preamps. Um, I use a Mac computer. I use um, um, one of those square, I don't even know what it's called, um, it's a square Mac. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah, anything else? No, I just love to explore making music. I, I write up here all the time. I spend about eight or ten hours most days up here in the studio working on things and uh, exploring sound, uh, exploring timbre, um, mic positioning. Uh, I've recorded my last seven projects up here. And uh, this is where I love to work. It's great. It's awesome. I love it. Living the dream.
Next up, we have Javon Quelo. Javon is an excellent saxophonist based out of Nashville, Tennessee, originally from Boston. His credits of people that he's played with just goes is pretty impressive. Jake Owen, Megan Trainer, CC Winans, Brett Eldridge, Reba McIntyre, Boys to Men, uh, Ronnie Millsap, just goes on and on. He can be seen playing around town under his own name, and I highly recommend you go check him out when he does. Um, first and foremost, I want to give a huge shout out to Chris West. Uh, thanks for putting this virtual saxophone roundtable discussion thing together. Super cool idea. Um, stoked to hear what all these other guys have to say, both on and off the, the horns. Um, and thank you for including me. I really do appreciate that. So today, um, I recorded on alto. Um, uh, I typically end up playing mostly tenor living in Nashville. Most of the work that I get called to do is, you know, geared more towards tenor or baritone. Um, but myself, I am more of an alto and soprano player at heart. So whenever I have an opportunity to choose, I love to choose the, the upper, the higher horns. I've got two altos. I've got a uh, Yamaha Unlacquered Custom Z that I use mostly for section playing or for uh, classical playing. I do a lot of teaching, so I play a lot of classical saxophone. Um, but when I'm doing uh, more soloistic stuff or jazz straight ahead um, or, you know, pop funk R&B on alto, um, I go with my Selmer. This is my Mark VI Selmer. Um, this is circa 1959-1960. Um, mouthpiece is a Van Doren S Plus, uh, v, v, Van Doren V16 S Plus chamber. Um, it is a 8 tip opening, um, and I'm using a gold-plated BG Duo ligature and playing a Van Doren Java Red uh, four-strength tenor saxophone reed. Um, I was advised by a good friend in town um, who also plays tenor sax reeds on alto to give them a shot, and I have not looked back since. So this is kind of what I've been digging on for quite some time now. I uh, recorded into Logic. I used my Apollo X4 interface uh, running through a Neve 1084 uh, preamp plugin. And I recorded using my Slate ML1 modeling microphone, um, which we can maybe talk about microphones a little bit later, but this is a super cool mic. It allows you to emulate different types of microphones that I've been kind of experimenting with. Um, I'm digging it. I'm really liking it. Um, so as far as the track goes, um, it's a pretty open-ended track. I feel like you could, you could take a, several different approaches to this. I mean, it's kind of centered around bluesier changes. So, you know, you could definitely take the more pop commercial route and use more blues soul-based language and, and not really worry so much about getting in the changes so much. Um, or you could take the more straight ahead jazz approach and play a lot more um, bebop language and get really in the changes and altered dominance and all that kind of thing. Um, I personally have never really saw myself as a jazz player. I've always considered myself more of a pop commercial guy. I, I feel most at home when I'm playing funk and soul and blues and R&B. Um, but I wanted to try and uh, marry the two. So you'll kind of hear in the beginning of the track I'm playing uh, a little simpler, more based in blues. Um, then we have that little like 3625 turnaround that gets you back to the top of the form and I go a little more bebop there and play some, you know, altered dominant language. Uh, and then I finish it out again with more of the soul blues uh, language. Um, it's always been interesting to me, you know, whenever you have a short little thing like this and, you know, a client wants to hear a saxophone solo, it's like there's so many ways to go. What, what do you end up going with? Um, so this is kind of a fun challenge to figure out, you know, do you take lane A, lane B, or do you kind of combine the two? So hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Miguel Alvarado. Miguel is an incredible saxophonist based out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. He studied music at the University of North Florida under the direction of Monkey Green and has got to play with many jazz legends as well as tour the world playing music. Miguel can currently be seen playing around the Nashville and Murfreesboro area under his own name. 
And a side note, he's also an incredible piano player too. So let's see what Miguel has to say. Hey, what's up y'all, it's Miguel. Um, yeah, so this was a fun project to do and I appreciate Chris uh, including me on it. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'll talk about a little bit about my gear and then about the solo. Yeah, in terms of gear, I have a, an old transitional chew, um, a con transitional. Um, I love it. It's um, it's exactly what I've been looking for for a long time. I've had it, I bet, I guess, a little under a year, and I, I really enjoy um, how wide open it is. Um, it plays real nice, and I can subtone. It sounds real nice. I mean, I just like how it plays, how it feels, and everything. I... Um, I kind of raised stuff and uh, on my own um, I used just because things kind of get expensive sometimes especially when you have a lot of modifications um, I used uh, a plastic compound and it melts um, when you put boiling water on it so I, I melted it and and just kind of form it into the exact shape I want and if I mess up I just put more water on it and just kind of softened up and I did it again and so it was perfect and then if I ever don't like it, I just put water and it comes right off again. Uh, warm water, hot water. Um, and then I also put a little one here on the, on the pin of this mouthpiece. I have a Paris Chose um, neck. I mean, not on the neck. I have a Paris Chose neck that I got. Um, it's a wooden neck. I really like it. It opens up the saxophone even more. But I put this little piece on it because the pin wasn't a screw. It's a pin. And uh, I just kind of didn't want it to fall out. That'd be bad. So I put that in there. It kind of holds it in. Uh, my mouthpiece is uh, one of those CEOs custom mouthpieces, um, the printed ones. I really like it. I've had it for a couple of years now, and I I, I just love it. Um, and I use Forest Tone reeds. I've been using Forest Tone now for a long time. And um, they're synthetic. They're like a blend of some like bamboo and, and other plastics. But they last a ridiculously long time. This reed I've had now, at least three or four years. I mean, my Alta reed I've been playing for for over five years and it's just once once you get them you kind of have to play them and then you clip them and you kind of you almost like you have to like morph them into exactly what you want but once you get them where you want them uh they last for as long as you take good care of them a little expensive but it to me it's worth it i never have to worry about playing outside or anything like that my mics i use right now on um, for this video i use the 414 and i use this russian um active ribbon that I really like and I blend the two sounds one is really dark and one is brighter and I mix the two so that it sounds most like what I hear when I play my own saxophone so yeah I have a few mics and a few things but I find that if you just really learn your gear um it makes all the difference in the world so the solo was just um you know I I played some Lydian dominant stuff on the descending uh, dominant thing at the beginning just try to play lyrically so that it sounds like melodies for the most part. And I let one thing kind of lead to the next thing and try to play as organic as you can when you're playing with, you know, a computer as a background. But um, and that's that's not, nothing special on the solo. Um, just try to play pretty music. And now it's my turn. Just so I wouldn't be influenced by anybody else's plan, I recorded my solo before I listened to anybody else's. So let's hear how I tackle these changes. As far as setup goes, this is my Busher, or Bisher, uh, however you want to pronounce it, top hat and cane. It's from the mid 50s. My mouthpiece is a Theo Wani. This one is the Gaia, the original Gaia. Uh, and this is a Rigatti Gold Reed. I think I'm on two mediums. For recording, this is uh, it's a handmade ribbon mic made by Nathan McLeod, which um, is an awesome mic. That's going into my Universal Audio 610 preamp, uh, and that's going into my RME Fireface 400 interface, which is then going into my computer. As far as how I approach the track, 
Um, so obviously it's more of kind of a jazzy swinging tune. So I took more of that approach, outlining the chord changes and doing some, you know, lower and upper chromatic chord tones, which is, you know, chromaticism, which is kind of very common for bebop. I'm trying to create melodies. And another one is motifs. I noticed I did that a couple times on the solo uh, and on the other one is I, uh, you know, I played a lick or something that I liked, so then I repeated it, but change it just slightly to kind of create a, you know, a variation on a motif. Um, and then just being melodic and, uh, you know, making it sound good. <laughs> Well, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I had a blast doing this. A huge thank you to Mickey, Max, Jeff, Javon, and Miguel for participating in this. You guys are all incredible players, and I'm honored to have you on one of my videos. I will leave links in the description to all of their contact info and social media, so you should check them out and go and support them. Once again, thank you so much, and stay tuned for more.